Hey guys, how we doing? Welcome again for another live broadcast of Contagious Leadership. Lorianne, you excited? Yes. Oh, I am so excited about this guest. <laughs> yeah, I think we're going to flip the script a little bit here today, and we're going to talk with the women and understand why some of you are making decisions that you don't need to. And we would love to get the guy's opinion, but especially right now, if you are a woman in business, if you're a mother, if you are a single mom or a professional, you definitely want to sit around and catch this as we talk to Coach Wit. We will be right back in the next few seconds with our new guest. Let's go. Fantastic. I don't know about you, Rigo, but I like love listening to that intro video every week. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it pumps me up. Yeah. It, it does. It pumps me up. So real quick, guys, just to let you know, Lori, why don't you quickly introduce yourself before we bring our guest in and why Thank and what you, you. do. Thank yeah. you. I'm a reform pain police Shaga who accidentally became a professional speaker after spending many years on the stage. I have stepped off the stage to share and teach coaches and consultants how to leverage speaking opportunities so that they get positioned as the expert, attract the perfect clients, and monetize their authority. I use the three C's to get the three R's, which is your speech should be compelling, captivating, and most importantly, converting so that your audience will be raving about you, remembering you, and referring you. That's what I do. Rego, tell us That's tell awesome. us about you. Yeah, no, we're not gonna give you that big of a script, but basically our business helps you leverage your personal and company brand to create more awareness and boost your leads organically and all inbound. We have lots of different programs where we help individual solopreneurs or large businesses offset the cost of creative and getting themselves out there. And that's the thing. We are in a new place in a new market. It is not an agency. We are a creative and in an and, and, and e-learning type of environment. So we'll help you get to the next step, especially as a small business owner. All right, let's bring in our, our guest. Uh, Donnie, you wanna go ahead and bring her in? And let's give her a little round of applause, Coach Whitney Vazan. So if you guys are saying, wait a second, the name seems a little familiar, it is. And that is because she's bringing the same heat in the female style of another coach that we love to have on here. But Coach Whit, why don't we give you the floor for a little bit, introduce yourself to our audience and talk about what it is that you do and why you're here today. Well, first of all, thank you uh, for having me today. Um, what I do, that's always such a trick question to me. It's just, I am me and I bring me to other women with just vulnerability. And I, my big thing that I like is that I, um, I want women to remember the voice that they have inside of themselves, the choice that they have to bring that back out through their vulnerability in being them. Because so often as women, we forget who we were before it all started with children and jobs and all of the things that we add into our lives. Wow, this is going to be a great show. Yeah. <laughs> I've, been, I've been looking forward to having this conversation. So I've got a couple things that I'll bring to you guys and, and, and I'm gonna bring some questions and uh, some facts that are out there in regards to this, uh, Whitney, but I wanna go ahead and, uh, and give Lorianne an opportunity to kind of get to started as a professional, as a woman in the space. And with you, Coach Witt, uh, maybe let's get it kicked off here. When you, you've been working with hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of different people, if not thousands, I don't know, but I know that you've been doing this a long time. And as you've worked with couples, and individuals, especially with women that you're helping empower, what are some of the, the largest attributes that you see that, that have held women down as you've helped them get through and, and past that stage? 
I mean, I think I think the biggest things that I see that I hear is that they're just exhausted. The end of the day gets to the to the end of the day and you know, there's no time. Time is like such an issue that I hear constantly and that they've just really lost who they are. They're not having fun. They're going through the motions. They're it, again, exhausted and it's over and over. And even in women that are like in, in amazing jobs, even women who absolutely love being mothers and are in good relationships, this isn't just for the woman who is, you know, down and depressed and divorced and all of the things. It's all women across the board. I hear this constantly. It's so true. I mean, that's, and I hear that too from, from my clients uh, and just in like, you know, just reading social media posts about how exhausted we are. And, and I, and I gotta wonder, Whitney, I mean, I've got some of my own opinions on this, but do you think it's just a habit or even like a badge of honor that like, I'm, if I'm busy, I'm being a good mom. If I'm busy, I'm being a good professional. What's, what's your take on that? Oh my gosh. I mean, I feel like it, I've done this and I do this still. I'd like to pretend like I, I'm above, you know, martyring myself in the cause of I'm so busy. Um, and I think what we do often is we create these to-do lists that are miles and miles and miles long. And it's all stuff that we've created, things that we actually want to get done. Some of them not so much, but we martyr ourselves in this to-do list and get so involved in complaining about it instead of actually seeing the results that we've created in our day and taking a few of those things. And instead of looking at the whole mile long list, just saying, hey, this is what I'm going to accomplish today and being happy and deciding like that is enough. Yeah. Okay. So before we dive into the how to get out of this problem, can we just like touch on like how does somebody because i think that this is such a habit this is just such um shall i say almost like the norm that we see out there you know like we're all products of our environment so if i hang around with you know like a group of women and everybody's busy well oh so am i i'm so busy too um what are some symptoms or signs that we could just be sharing with with our audience that says like okay you're over busy if this, this, and this. Well, I mean, I think I think one of the, the big tall tale signs is if I am looking to call and complain to my friends, or the first thing I do when my husband walks through a door is complain, I think that's that's a sign right there that I'm too busy. Because I, I mean, it, you know this, I mean, and I got to experience a little bit of this over the holiday of just taking a deep breath in and in deciding, hey, I'm going to spend this amount of time just playing. And and it's it was I again like I, I I'm hearing myself say this and it's it had been too long because I just decided, hey, I'm gonna grind. This is the time to grind. And then again, I'm falling on my own sword of I'm, you know, I'm super busy right now and therefore I'm going to complain about it. Mm, I love that. So any, you know, besides complaining, so if you find yourself complaining a lot, um, you might fall into this category. Are there other ones? Like, I mean, I'm thinking of like when I've been saying too much, you know, like it's harder to get out of bed. I hit the snooze a little bit more. I just feel like, uh, like my workouts are lagging. Um, they're not as productive. I mean, is that also signs of this or am I sort of like going down the burnout lane here? Well, I mean, that is a form of burnout, right? I, it, for sure. It's, it's, you know, the snooze is a big thing because there's a certain time, you know, I know that I wake up at a certain time every morning. And when I'm starting to push that, that button, that's when I know I get to dial back what I'm doing in a day. And I mean, I, my way to burn off steam is to work out. Um, so when I'm starting to skip my workouts, that's when I know like, Hey, some, something, something is off and it's time to readjust. Right. Right. So all of this, like, just, it's a choice. It's a choice to be busy. It's a choice to keep saying yes to things. It's a choice to, um, 
you know, like put yourself on the back burner. And this was, you know, like you and I were talking about this before the show, before we started recording the show. And just a couple of nights ago, I spoke for an organization that I, it's like the third time that I've spoken for them. And I, and all three times, like I hear the audience saying, these are healthcare professionals and they're talking about, um, well, what do I do if I have, you know, a bad boss? What do I do if I have a moody boss? And I kept, you know, like I kept repeating myself and like all three times, as a matter of fact, like it's, you have a choice, a choice to stay working there, or you have a choice to actually go move to a different department, go move to a different hospital, go move to a different industry. And I think too, t- too many, too many times, um, coach Whitney, and please sh- share with me what, what you're, th- what you're thinking, you know, like. Too many times, like people feel like I don't have a choice. Like, who else is going to do all this stuff that's on this list that I have? It it totally it totally is a choice, and I'm I'm laughing right now as I know I I work out of my house. So again, that is a distraction in itself because there's always things pulling me. Right there's there's kids stuff, there's house stuff, there's work stuff, there's like my gym is in my garage, there's I want to go and work out stuff. Um, And I laugh because there are probably four or five loads of laundry unfolded, poured on my bedroom floor right now that I can constantly let call my name and distract me. Or I can just say, you know what? I'm not dealing with that today. That's not something I wanna busy myself with today. Cause I think oftentimes too, we think busy is productive and that's one of the things that like just drags us down it's like okay what do i want to do and be productive today and not let those distractions because that is a choice right no one knows except now everyone that i've told that i have four loads of laundry that need to be folded nobody knows that except me and i've I've heard women say yeah but that bothers me that that's undone so then find something else because we oftentimes busy ourselves by, by it, again, like you said, it's a choice and there's choices in certain situations. And I know you brought this up about work and I, I have had clients that I have coached that I can't leave this job and I hate this job, but I also have to feed my children. So what are the other things that I can put in place? And, and it's, it's choosing yourself. It's choosing yourself in other areas so that you can be stable enough to find that other job that you really want. Oh, I love that. And I also think that sometimes just um, knowing that you have a choice and like, hey, maybe I'm going to go look for another job. I mean, sometimes I find that, that with, especially with my clients, even that's freeing. To be able to go out there and look and say, you know what? There's nothing out there that I really want to do. So how can I make this place, you know, just feel better? Um, I'm just going to tell I, I got to share a story about laundry also now. <laughs> okay. Now I don't have, you know, four or five loads of laundry, but I also, it's just me and my husband and coach Whitney, you're so right. There were times where it's just like laundry calls to me. I got to get it done. But so what I did, decided was, you know, like he's a grown man, he can fold his own clothes. So I actually only do the wash. And I put it back in the basket and I put it right by his closet. That was just something that I came up with. Like, because I was like, this is my choice. This is how I'm going to deal with this. I will still get the laundry done. But now I felt more empowered because I'm getting it done basically on my terms. I had a, I, I had a friend, I worked in the school system for like 15 years or so. And I had a friend who, she looked glamorous. She'd come to work. She, I mean, hair on point, makeup on point, and she just looked great. And I also knew she had eight kids. And at the time I only had one. (laughs) And I'm like, okay, what is your secret? How early are you waking up in the morning? How is it possible that you're taking care of all of these humans and you look the way you do? And her, she said, here, I'll tell you my secret. We live out of a laundry basket. Nothing is ever folded, and I'm okay with that. And it was, that was so freeing to hear that. It's like, all right, I can do this. I think sometimes we have this vision of what the perfect 
like our perfect lives should be being the perfect wife, being the perfect professional, you know, like the perfect everything. And then we come to find out like we view somebody else who we think is perfect. And again, we are judging somebody's front stage without knowing what their backstage is. And then to hear her backstage was like, wow, you're right. It's so that's so freeing to hear how other people are managing their lives. Those are great tips. So Coach Whit, I got something for you. So, you know, with in these situations for a lot of women, uh, as they get into relationships and uh, they move into marriage, a lot of times these conversations will happen where there's an agreement, right? Where sometimes it's the men, it's a lot less, uh, where the men will decide that they're going to be the, the, the homemaker, the one that's going to take care of the home, make sure that the children are getting into areas of education, doing all of the things that it takes to run a household, but typically it's the women. And so when you look at these situations where women have multiple children and they are building out this career, because that's really what it's become. If, if I want to take this and, and I'm going to play devil's advocate here for a second, because if I'm, you know, uh, as, as a male working in any industry, as I'm building my career, each of those steps become very valuable as I'm growing and I'm constantly looking for affirmation, right? And it's easy to get affirmation in a industry where it doesn't matter where, but I mean, you're going to get, you know, accolades, you get annual reviews, little things like that. And I'm not getting into any of these being the right things, but it's just the fact that you get notification, you have peers that will compliment. And then you look at most of these women where when you look at something like, yeah, I have to have my laundry done. Isn't it easy for somebody to find these areas where they, they have to latch onto because it is the only affirmation they really can get in the fact that they're doing a good job? Like, how do you, how do you work with someone like that? Like, how is that necessarily wrong, but how can they break free of something that's going to eventually kind of hold them in a bondage, but when they're doing this 24 hours a day and, you know, they're constantly working all these areas and they're, this is their life. They're building the career. Like how do they, how do they get that, that affirmation, that, that good job? How do they can grow themselves where they know they're making a difference? And I think that that seems to be an area that I think would be very difficult. Uh, I've seen that in, in my own life with my own wife, and, and I don't know how to solve that problem. Well, uh, my question to you, uh, Rigo, would be, have you ever thanked her for doing laundry? Oh, yeah, of course. You know, I've, I've learned that over the years, those simple thank yous, they really do matter. But I've noticed that over a period of time, it's it's not so much about by affirmations and it's for sure there's a lot more that a husband can do i've come to find that there was many many areas as a husband i could have done more to take certain uh, uh weights on take certain uh responsibilities on so that that way there's a shared responsibility but moving that aside like what about when women are in those types of situations and you're working with them because i think that's important right they're holding on to these these things that that give them value. How do we keep their value, help them keep their value, but still break free where they can find empowerment in themselves? Well, I mean, the lot in life is not I mean, purpose in life is not to fold clothes. And, you know, it and this is this is going to be a touchy subject for for a lot of women. Listen, I have five children and I hear often from women that their purpose in life is their children. And at the end of the day, they they move on and they move out and they they're their own their own humans. And it it will be a sad day having, you know, two children already out of the house and the third one about to leave in a few months knowing that if that's my purpose, then when they're all grown and out of my house, then what do I have left? And it's really teaching them, teaching women, teaching myself constantly 
that my purpose in life is what I want. Like, what do I want to choose? Because I can promise you any day of the week, laundry is not going to be that thing. There are a lot of things that I do, you know, daily or weekly or tasks that I know will I not necessarily want to do them, but it makes my household run. It makes my business run. It makes my family run that, okay, this isn't my purpose. So what is my purpose? And, and the way I do this is by, by sitting with them and setting targets. We set targets in all areas of our life, not just our families, but in our finances and, you know, in our fitness and our faith and even in fun. The thing that I see most often in women is we have forgotten how to have fun. And we think that fun is waiting, you know, for that trip that happens once in a blue moon that, or, you know, I have to like set up some elaborate something to have fun. And in teaching women that we can find these pockets of joy, like even if it's just five minutes inside of a day and, and showing them you know, and teaching them to decide what their purpose is, because I can promise you, if I would ask a hundred women right now, very few would say cleaning up my house. It's a great answer. <laughs> I, I think that's a great answer. And, and you're right. I think it can, it is, it is a, a touchy subject. And at the same time, I think that it, it requires, it requires, uh, other input, right? And and so in a relationship like that, typically the women are constantly supporting and giving to a husband in their role and in their careers. And it's, it's very common that the, it's not reciprocated in the same way. And so I think that, that that's a lot of it. And you're right. So asking the question, have you thanked, you know, thanked her for doing the laundry? I think it's a simple question, but there's there's more to it, right? There's a lot of that because that affirmation is important. I also think it's not reciprocated sometimes, Rigo, because we don't ask for what we want. Mm. We we I know that I have I had shied away for a long time of of asking for what I want, even when it came down to picking a restaurant. It was like, no, whatever you want. And then inside, I'm like, no, I don't really want to go and have sushi burritos. And that's like a standing joke in our in our marriage right now. But hey, I don't want to take care of this aspect of whatever it is. You know, even inside of business, I've done that recently is I don't want to do this part of business. Now, as a business owner, <laughs> I know that there are going to be some aspects of my business that I get to do whether I want to do or not but it's me speaking up for what I want. And that's what I want to help women. When I say find their voice of saying, hey, I want this, what, however small it is or however big it is and know that there's going to probably be a little conflict because if you've been in a marriage <clears throat> for 10 or 13 or 15 years and you've never spoken up, when you do start to speak up, the yeah. other person, I know, uh, Coach Kevin had a hard time at first of, you know, just like, whoa, okay, the, the tiger is now out of her cage and what do I do with it? Ooh, I like that a lot. I, and I, I think that's a really, really good point. Because, I mean, for years, I can tell you in my own experience, and I've seen this before, Whitney, we've, we've talked about this, even in some of the trainings that we've gone through, right? When we talk about stuff in, in, in social context and social selling, even asking the questions, we, we learn that because it's so common where people don't say, no, this is what I want or this is what I don't want. And you made a really good point. Years, I can tell you in my position for years, hey, where would you guys like to, what would you guys like to do? And it always comes down to me have had to do the planning, the thinking, and it's like, I've been doing this all week. Like, I want to know what you guys want to do, but they have no plan. And then, of course, you bring the plans up. Well, I don't want to do that. Well, then come up with something. <laughs> like, I'm I'm trying to figure out something here. It's like, no, tell me what you want to do, and we'll go do it. And you're right. I don't see that happening. And and I think it is, it is tough because later on when someone tries to, and that's in any position. Mm -hmm. If you're a manager and you're working with a staff and a team and you've allowed them to have a lot of freedom and then you wanna go ahead and start to reel that back 
and you want to take that leadership role back, you want to be able to get that. It's not going to go very easily because you've given you've given too long of a time period for someone to create a new, uh, um, uh, you know, habit. Right. Like that's how they do things like they're now making the decisions. They're now deciding where you're going to go for dinner. Then later it's like, you know, you never pick what I want. And it's, it's hard on the person that's learning finally how to say, this is what I want. And the way that I would encourage you to do this, if you're somebody that doesn't even know how to do this, is to start small. Like we're, we're talking about a restaurant, like that's a really small thing to say, you know, on your, de- your next date night, you just deciding, hey, this is where I want to go. And start it when you start with the small things then i feel like it starts to build like you said it's a habit we've fallen into these habits of not asking for what we want but if we can start kind of getting that you know in with the you know i'm going to decide on the restaurant tonight or i'm going to decide on the next thing that's where we start to build so that when bigger issues come up we can reach into those and just get practice making decisions just to start small and work our way up to those bigger decisions. One of the things that I've told clients when we're, they're trying to work on making decisions is like you go to the grocery store. I mean, if you're buying like crackers, there is a huge selection now. It's like just, and so I tell like, just pick one quick. I mean, we're talking about like an item that's under $5 and you're gonna go through it and you're gonna, you're gonna be back to buy another one. And if you don't like it, you can buy another brand. But just like getting in the habit of like, let me just make this decision. Cause you're right, Whitney. A restaurant is no big deal. It's one meal. You don't, you're not picking a restaurant and it's like, you have to go there for the rest of your life whenever you want to go out for dinner. So let's just start small. And I love the, uh, this, so, we're, we're sort of opening this conversation about habits now. Yeah, I mean, now Whitney, you, I mean, uh, scared, sorry. <laughs> uh, Lorianne, you're making comments about your female clients similar to what we're, I'm hearing from Coach Witt. So for both of you guys, and we'll start with Coach Whitney, but why do you think that's the case? Like, why do you think, and and, and maybe I'm going to be very clear here. I have seen the same thing in men that have a difficult time in leadership. They're not making decisions. They don't stand their ground. They don't, they're not firm on what it is that they need or expect. So it almost feels like, I mean, I'm not going to just throw this out like this is only a, a, a female thing, but both of you working with women in two different areas seeming to run against the same uh, issue where they're just not making decisions. Why do you think that is? I and mean, why do you think that that is one of the the, the, the toughest first steps for them? I, I mean, I think for, for myself, if, if I were to look back at making decisions, or asking for what I want. I mean, I, I definitely know that it's across the board. I mean, I see it, I see it, you know, with men and women. I've coached both. I I think it's just like you said, Rigo, it's almost to the point where it's easier to keep the peace sometimes. And I know for myself that it was like at, you know, certain points of I've made so many decisions, whether it was in business or with my family that there are just some things that I don't want to make a decision about and I want somebody to do it for me but then I'm aggravated with myself that it didn't speak up for what I actually wanted so it's almost again like that I'm tired and I'm burned out and it then it gives me something else to complain about that oh well you know I we went to the restaurant I didn't even really want to go to, or I'm playing this goose chase with my husband of, well, he'll, you know, right now he'll say, well, let's go to barbecue or sushi burritos. Cause he knows those are two things I'm not a big fan of. So it's just, I have learned and it's, it's just a skill. It's, it's, it's reps, right? It's, it, you know, pulling that out and deciding, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to do it with the small things. And then therefore it leads me into the bigger, bigger decisions. I like that. And I guess I would add to that. What I see is um, perfectionism, Mm -hmm. trying to be perfect so that because I'm afraid of, or this is what I see in my clients, they're afraid of being judged for what they did or what they didn't do if they did it right. So it's the, I got to make the perfect decision. So we spend so much energy 
making some of these small decisions and then it just becomes this habit. And then I also see it's also a lack of self-trust. You know, can I trust myself to pick the restaurant? Can I trust myself what path my team, you know, like in my corporate job, you know, is going to be taking? Can I, that lack of trust just has like this domino effect in so many areas of our lives. And you've probably heard me um, also say that you know, like how you do one thing is how you do everything else. So where else does the not being able to pick out a restaurant, where else does that show up in your life? And just like you said, Coach Whitney, you know, sometimes we just, we're just exhausted. But to be able to communicate that, like decision fatigue is, is real. Mm-hmm. But you have to be able to communicate with other people like, you know what, I've been making decisions all day. I really don't care where we go to dinner tonight, but then you have to be okay with whatever decision is made for you. If you're throwing in, you know, like, give, but, give but is, that, is that the right direction? Right. Is it, is that the right direction of saying I, I don't care because then what's happening is you're, you're putting, of course you care, right? Of course you care. You just don't want to make a decision because if somebody says, I want to have, sushi burritos, like you said, Whitney, and you don't want them. You just said you don't care. So now you really can't say anything, right? Well, so the way I combat that Rigo is I'm like, okay, I don't want to pick the restaurant and I don't want sushi burritos. There we go. But that's a different answer, right? Mm -hmm. I don't want to pick a restaurant tonight. I would like you to think of a place that you would like to take the family or take us out. But here are some options. Right. And so now that's a different conversation. And I don't, you know, when you look at, (laughs) when you look at the list of, of the, all the issues and the top 10 issues that, that every marriage struggles from men or women, their top on both ends is lack of communication. And it's, it's not so much a lack of communication as much as it is a lack of understanding how to communicate. Uh, I was going to go because I don't think a lot of times it's not a lack because listen, we, my husband and I are some, we can communicate, but is he truly hearing what I'm saying? And is, am I hearing what he's saying? That is, that is key, Rigo, because yeah. we can have a conversation and we're like, okay, go. And we'll walk out the door and he goes right. And I go left and we're like, wait, yeah. what the hell? <laughs> well, because, you know, it, without a clear understanding of what everybody's interpretation is of right you don't you you can't assume that everybody understands what right is if someone takes a right if someone learned that right is the other way you know you know if you want to use that as an example but you said something earlier it's just that they you know you have found that most of these women are not telling their spouse what they want or anybody else they're they're not being clear as to what they want and i think that that's that seems to be one of the most important things at least in my experience uh, you know, over 20 plus years, I found that that was the greatest gap, which was not identifying the actual uh, details of the conversation. So I don't want to pick. I'm not interested in picking, but here are some things I don't want to do. Here are some ideas, and then I'll let you take it from there. Or why don't you come up with a couple ideas and then give it to me before the end of the afternoon so I can look at it and then I will tell you which one I like. Or simply saying, these are the things I would really like to see us doing, right? Maybe it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an action. Maybe it's something that's developing as a family. And so then it gives direction. But I think without that, then the other person, the spouse is saying, okay, well then now they wanna make a decision. And then they're afraid to make it because now it's like, well, I'm going to make it and you're going to shoot it down anyways. <laughs> right. And so it just goes back and forth. And then it turns into, it turns into an argument. And the sad thing is, is that it just seems like there's just, there were little things that just didn't get filled in. And all you had to do is make it very clear. And I think it really comes down to that, Whitney, which is the person that is struggling with this man or female really just needs to be very clear on what they want. And if the other person understands that, then it's easy to start moving down the path and navigating through it. I I don't know. That's just what I'm observing from this. And and there's so much power in saying, I don't know what I want. 
Mm -hmm. I think oftentimes it's like, I, if, if I called, you know, someone right now and had a coaching session, it was our first call and I, and I would ask them, you know, what do you actually want inside of your marriage? A lot of times it's like crickets, like it, like there isn't an answer or the answer is so small that, you know, I, I just, I see this often and it's okay to say, I don't know what I want. And I know we're talking about restaurants because it's just an, it's an easy something. And I know this comes up in most relationships, but you know, even if you brought it down to like, you know, it, it, your, what do you want for your kids? Or, you know, in, in terms of, I, we, we moved, you know, from California to Texas and that, that was huge. You know, being able to say, listen, I don't know if I want to, or I want that, you know, there's a lot of power in saying, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So how do we start to figure out um, and uncover what, what we want? I think that this is a, a valuable um, kind of like turn in this conversation. Like, um, how do we, how, how do you work with your clients, Coach Whitney, you know, to uncover, like, what do you want? Start off with the small things, move up to the big things. How do you advise your clients? So again, we, we function in five aspects of life. So it's, it's our families, it's in our fitness, it's in our um, finances, our faith and fun. And when I'm able to break things apart like that it, and put them in buckets, so say, it, it made it a lot easier for me to decide, okay, what do I actually think is fun? And what are some things that I wanna do in my life that do doesn't have to be yet another thing on my to-do list, but something that I actually want to drive toward. And when I do that inside of my family, I, I get the same, it, and listen, it can be something small. Like, again, I have five kids, so it's like, I want to I want to share my time. So I want to do different dates with my kids. What am I, that's what I want right now. I want to be very meaningful in, in um, with my husband. I don't want it to just be in passing that we're having a relationship. I want to have a marriage that's on purpose, right? So what, am, what do I want inside of that? When I can start to break things apart like that, that's when I see the light bulb moments with my clients of saying, okay, yes, this is what I want. And it's important to say what you don't want. Like what's working in your finances? What's not working? What do you want to keep and what do you want to change? And when you can see both sides of that, that's when you can start making decisions that you can start driving toward. All right. That, that's good. That's really good. And a lot, of, just like you said, you know, sometimes we know, we may not know exactly what we want, but we know what we don't want. Here's what I don't like. Here's what doesn't work for me. And that almost like takes it like from everything that's a possibility and it starts to narrow it down so that you can then decide, okay, this is what I want. And I also think it's, it's really valuable for us to share with the audience that, you know, sometimes moving towards something that you think you like, and it might, this might be um, something really interesting, something fun and new to try. And then you're moving towards it and trying it. It's just like, I don't like this. I mean, you still have a choice. You get to decide. I don't have to continue working to the end of this goal because I already know that I don't enjoy this. Um, and then I can try something else. Do you see a lot of that also? Oh gosh, I, I, I in myself, like toward the, the end of this past year, I was like, I, I felt like I was drowning. Like I, I was barely keeping my nose above water. And that's when I went back to, I call them targets in each area. And I was like, okay, I'm not, nothing is making me excited. And I'm not driving toward anything that I supposedly wanted to do a couple of months ago. And so I shifted, I decided, okay, this is not working for me. And I think oftentimes, I mean, I don't know if you've ever done this, but you've picked up a book and the book, you start reading and the book is really boring, but then you just keep reading it and it was awful. And you're like, gosh, why did I even read that book? I think sometimes we, we, we go through life like this. Well, it, I have to finish this. And that's not true. And yeah. when I shifted into, okay, well, what do I want right now? Because I think oftentimes we don't give ourselves credit for either growing or just changing our minds. And 
I want to be very careful with this because I also don't want someone to think that, hey, like I've chosen to, let's say in fitness, to run a marathon and now I have to go and run 10 miles today and I don't really feel like it, so I'm going to give up on that that that's different like you know you're going to want to drive toward things that are hard and get uncomfortable because that's the growth that we see and also when you see that you just want to pull the covers over your head and not do anything that hey it's time for a shift right right and just being able to make distinguish the difference between this is hard and I'm learning something new. I'm teaching my nervous system something new. I'm teaching my body something new versus I want to avoid it. I want to run away from a challenge. You know, I always say like, you know, stone walls are there for a reason. We want to see how bad you want to get to the other side. But sometimes, you know, it's just a matter of like finding, like, how do I get to that goal? Maybe the way that you had determined to get to that goal or get to that target, to use your words, Whitney, is, you know, maybe I need to change that, change how I'm getting to that target, but constantly um, checking in with ourselves. Does this feel good? Do I enjoy doing this? You know, am I, I'm going to use the word sacrificing my, you know, like myself, you know, and I'm just kind of like filling in with like family to do's and work to do's. There's, this is such an interesting conversation. Well, I, I, I think it comes down, Whitney, to when you said working, not working, like how, how crucial is that? It, it's here's the crazy part as you're talking about these relationships and about women facing certain aspects. Like I keep hearing the same challenges and obstacles of, of literally a a person in a leadership role, someone who's got a small business, and, and they are they are in that same place. And I and I see that. And that's what I think is really interesting is that the differences are really not that different. They're in a different situation and position. But I see so many men. I'll tell you this, like when I stepped out of corporate America five years ago, so we're, we're, we're at that five year mark. And when I stepped out of corporate America five years ago, I can't tell you, oh, I was thinking about doing that. Well, I was going to do the same thing. Well, why didn't you? <laughs> That's why I said, well, do it. <laughs> well, you know, you're already doing it. Well, pfft, dude, there's a whole planet. I think we're going to be okay. Like, you know, like, wh why don't you? You hear this stuff all the time and you hear a lot of different excuses and you hear reasons why they won't. And why they do and the thing is is well you're not going to do it because you never will like you never have and you're just going to say these types of things all the time and it's very rare when you find somebody that's actually willing to step out of that comfort zone because a lot of them are stuck in these places and i see them and they're unhappy and they're with the same company all the time and i see them every year and i'm like why don't you change oh yeah it's not working like what's working and not working and and you're you're absolutely correct. It's crazy. And I'm not trying to take this shift away from women or mothers in the situation. I'm just blown away how similar these situations are. When I see men in leadership roles or men in their careers and they don't, they can't build through this or they don't know how to step out. And it comes down to that. They're just, they're not looking at, look, this isn't working. Just go somewhere else. You know, Lorian, you said this uh, earlier and you were talking about how, uh, you know, you've got people that, are stuck in their same in the same job and you're like, well then just leave. Well, okay. Choice. Leave. Choice. Just go. Like <laughs> go find something else. Like my God, just simply that 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 empowerment move, right? Just reach gives you that you take control back. And then you realize it is in your hands. And I think a lot of times we think that we're stuck in a situation where we don't have the ability to make a decision. Now we come back to this conversation, Coach Witt. And I think in marriages or mothers or women in those roles, I think at some level they they don't, maybe they just don't feel that they have that empowerment. They can't just make that decision and say, no, this is what I want. This is what I don't want. This isn't working. This is working. And like, here's the lines, right? You know, it's, it's interesting because we, I, I think on a level that I don't even think we truly understand sometimes that we, we just choose to sacrifice ourselves and then we're angry about it at the end of the day because we've made that choice. And, you know, being a business owner and, you know, being an entrepreneur, 
I can work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and it's never going to be done. And I, there have been days that I sacrifice myself for the good of this company. So I'm thinking, or if I do the same thing with my children, I see women do this often with their children is they, they do all of these things for their children. And then they're the shell at the end of the day, or there's the shell constantly because we're, we're constantly sacrificing and you can edge out time that you are choosing yourself because what we don't see often is if I build me, then my kids are better off for it. If I build me, my business is better off for it. Yes, I deserve taking an hour out of my day to go and work out because if I do that, then I am a better entrepreneur. I'm a better mother. I am the things that I want to do in all of those roles when I take care of me. And think of the role model that you are for like your children, for the people who are around you, so that we stop this, I'm sacrificing myself. Because where did we learn this? I mean, I can tell you that I, I just, I learned it from my mother. I saw the way that, you know, the way that I grew up, this is what she did. So I just took on that. Maybe this is what I'm supposed to do. And then you hang around with a bunch of other women who are kind of doing the same thing. So that it just feels like this is normal versus, you know, like what we keep going back to is that it's a choice. I chose to take on this role and I get to make choices that will take me out of this role and take care of myself, go work out, you know, go sit on the couch and read a book, you know, hire a team member, you know, delegate something at work that isn't, um, that you can't fit on your plate anymore. It's, it's, it, it, that is hard to change the generational things that we've learned. My mom was a homemaker and she, she did an amazing job at taking care of us. But I don't ever recall my mom stopping and playing. That is something that, that my mom did not do. My dad played with us all the time and he was an entrepreneur. I, and I knew that when I had children, I wanted to play. And I remember my mom saying this to me. She was like, I love the fact that you sit down and play endless games of Candyland when they were little. And, and even all the play, like I, I have um, bruises on my knees currently from uh, <laughs> swinging with my eight year old and jumping off to show him that I could still do it. And that, that it was fun, even with the bruises. But I think that's so hard to, to, to break out of some of the generational things that we have been taught in this. Again, I don't think it's just women. I think it's also men. I see this in men of, I was taught that I need to go and work and work is what I do. And then they don't, when they come home, there's nothing left because they've given it all to work. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. And I, and I think a lot of times, if we're not careful, we create our value system in what it is that we're doing. So whether as men in typical situations where they're building their value system at work, so they give everything there and they look for all the affirmation there and then they don't have anything when they're home and none of the relationship there matters. I've seen that in my own life. And then in women where you said this earlier, I hear this all the time and I've seen this again myself, you know, my children are my top priority. This is my priority. Well, you're not a priority and then everything else isn't a priority. And it sounds great, but it's actually, it has a negative uh, effect as you start to see it go down. And the interesting piece is, as I've heard so much of this sounds similar in business, there's all kinds of coaches, there's all kinds of teachers, there's all kinds of people that help you out. I think in marriages, maybe there's some, but really in empowering women, I think it's, it's becoming more popular, but I, I think that's the key coach wit is, is that I don't think there's enough groups or people out there that are challenging that and helping women kind of press forward. And that really brings me back to you and what it is that you guys are doing. Cause I know like with Lori Ann, you do this in a way you're empowering your clients in many ways. You're not just helping them grow uh, professionally or personally, you're helping them become empowered men or women. Uh, but with you coach wit and your, the, the, the relationship counseling and the stuff that you and your husband do and in the, the, the way that you focus in women in particular, 
Talk a little bit about that, because really that's what this comes down to. And, and that's what makes what you do special. Well, when I first got into this, it was um, because my my husband was part of this men's group and it was this it was empowering men. And I thought it was amazing. I saw the shift in my husband that I hadn't seen for a very long time. And I was like, man, I want this. And I looked around and there was nothing out there for women that was building them in all of the areas of our lives. And that's when I shifted into coaching women. And, and then I, I saw that, you know what, if we're only coaching the men and then they're coming back to their, their families, it's not working. And if we're only coaching the women and they're coming back to their families, things shifted some because what I found is women were starting to speak up for the things they actually wanted and communication was starting to happen inside of their relationships that look different from what they had before. But as Coach Kevin and I have been doing um, couples coaching, we're bringing the two together. And truly, if you want to be in a relationship, doing, you know, yes, I, I fully support like building yourself up, but at a time, like when do we bring the couple together to empower each other in the relationship? And also knowing that, hey, I I do my own thing and he does his own thing, but how important it is to bring it together. Love that. And so needed, <laughs> so needed. <laughs> There's so much to this. There really is. Because it's like, how do you get on the both want it? Right? One does and the other one doesn't. And the other one's like, oh, you gotta see this. And it's like, oh, you're all. You know, well, you know, oh, I, you're, you know, like, oh, you're, you're all enlightened by this. You spent all this money for coach guru over here. And I've been yelling at you about the same crap for the last 10 years. And it's like, yeah, you know, and it's like, all of a sudden they come back and, and that's, I, I think, what's that I, think they should, I, th I think, I think when, 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 when men and women, and I'm sure this is with any sort of relationship, it doesn't matter, same sex or not when you are getting into a relationship, maybe there should be like a, a, a waiver you have to understand. First off, as you're getting ready to get into a marriage, you need to understand that neither of you will communicate as clear as you think you are. <laughs> you will constantly think you got it figured out, you don't. You must be on the same page. You must go and work with communication, you know, counselors or people to help you get this, this information across. Again, it, this is the thing that it took me years to recognize this in my in my own life, but in business and in so many things, we constantly look and we grab tools and we get coaches and we get so many people engaged and involved to help communication, to help streamline uh, uh, ideas and concepts and innovation. Even if someone's got an idea figured out, they have to go and they bring it to someone else that understands how to unpackage that, right? Even if they're very good at their job, like everybody is there to help each other out. And then in our marriages, we just go into these things without without any of this. And, and it just we keep building all of this context up. And, and you said some things earlier, you know, they, they don't make decisions. Somebody will not say what they want. And then they start to build an animosity and then they have resentment towards it. And then it becomes an issue later. And then and it just and it grows and it grows and it grows. And it all starts off from the beginning with these communications where you're just not being clear of what you want what you don't want, what will work, what's not gonna work. And uh, yeah, it's crazy. It's almost like that should just be part of your <laughs> welcome to earth. Yes. And before you get forward, here's a here's a life lesson. Like here's something you should you should know. Uh, and I don't I don't think since I think since the beginning of time this conversation has I mean look at Adam and Eve, there's a communication gap there. Huge one. <laughs> right? Huge issue right there. Right. Yes. I don't know. And, and, and Rigo would also say there's a communication gap in, in with our children. You know, it's learning how to communicate with them and the importance of showing my children, you know, that I want you to choose you first and then your person and then your kids. You know, it's and we think that that's selfish, but 
you know, we, there is, there can be a communication gap in whoever you speak to. If you're an employee or if you're the boss and you're communicating with your customers, you know, their communication is huge. And it's, it's having that clarity again to here's what I'm actually saying and here's what you're hearing. And, and I laugh, you know, cause you said, I've, you know, I've been telling you this the same way for however many years. And then you pay somebody and you finally are getting it. Yeah. It's, it's because they were in a space and they were ready to hear it. And if we go through our relationships with this idea of knowing that we are forever changing and evolving into the next person that we, and not expecting our person to stay exactly who they were when they were when we first met them is so important. You know, it's really interesting. Um, for some reason, a, a memory just sparked and uh, I don't remember where I, it was, but something I heard when I was really young, but it's, it's had something to do with even your own taste buds and everything else, but every like seven years or something, your body goes through these different shifts, right? There's these, like, there's a whole different uh, shift. And, and, um, and even in your, in your mind, and, and I just remember something that my father told me when I was younger, it was in Spanish, so I'm not even going to try it right now because I'm still trying to translate it in my head, but something just sparked. And I realized, wait a second, you know, what a what a concept. What a concept to look at your life and say, okay, like it's been five, six, seven years. It's time for us as a family, as a couple, as any, we're going to go like, it's time for like, you know, like this 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 big reset and, and a focus because you're right. Like, so many years and if you look at marriages and you look at all these different you know major milestones in in your life you can you can almost nail it down to every five to seven years like these big giant shifts and it, how awesome would that be if you if you already you were proactively getting engaged and getting involved and setting new targets and new focuses for everybody anyways that's a whole different conversation coach wait listen we're going to be wrapping this up why don't you tell everybody how to find you how to get a hold of you and and how you, you know like what are you open to start helping people uh this year as is your you guys are continuing to expand your business how can they find you and how can you help them so you can email me at whitney wazian that my name is at the bottom of this uh this message, so I know it's a little tricky to, to say, but it's um, Whitney, Whitney at awakenathena.com is where you can find me in the email and I'm on um, all social platforms. It's Coach Wit is um, my, my name on there. So you can find me there. I am doing a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching with women right now. Um, I have done group coaching and I absolutely love group coaching too through Awaken Athena. And um, Coach Kevin and I are doing couples coaching, and that has been something that we have seen the most success in inside relationships. And you do not have to be married to be a part of this. We do um, coach couples that have been in long-term relationships that aren't married, and um, that's that's what I'm up to. And and just excited to keep um, just being vulnerable and putting myself out there in in the trials in and things that have worked for me and what hasn't worked for me and knowing that I'm continuously failing forward. Love it. Beautiful. Beautiful. Fantastic. Well, Coach Whitney, thank you so much. I just want to uh, thank you from the bottom of our heart. Donnie, let's give her a round of applause as we go ahead and and allow Whit to get out. Thank you so much. Hang tight, Coach Whit, as we get ready to kind of uh, lock this up. Hey, listen, you guys, we are so appreciative of you being here and being a part of the program, being a part of Contagious Leadership. Lorianne and I both are just so grateful. Uh, Lorianne, why don't you give us a couple final words before we close it up? Well, I think this was a great episode to just really talk about choices, that we all have choices. So anything that you feel like I have to do, just realize like, no, I've made the choice. Maybe it's time for me to make a new choice. And move forward with that one. Hey, and absolutely. And I agree with you completely. I, I wasn't really sure where this was going to go. I know it'd be interesting with the two of you, but uh, for sure, I was very, very happy to be a part of it. Listen, if you like what we're doing here, let us know. Okay. The number one way that you can help us is subscribing to our channels, uh, liking this and sharing it with others. Also making sure that you get on our YouTube channel 
and subscribing there and following as we're getting ready to continue to expand and bring you new content. We'd love for you to sign up for our newsletter as well. Let us know what's going on. We take all of these, these conversations and we break it down into some sweet nuggets and we highlight it for you. It comes out every week, a couple clips, and then it gives you opportunity to register for the next one. So listen, we're happy to be here. We're glad that you are as well. Let us know how we're doing. It means the world, it really does. Share with others, subscribe, like it, get the notification bell, let us know how we're doing. That's really it. You guys, God bless, take care of yourself, and we will see you next week see you on next Contagious week. Leadership Live.